All Quiet on the Western Front, won this year's Oscar for Best Cinematography, implying that it is the most visually appealing movie of the year. And since the movie has a really interesting color grade, we tried recreating it using Premiere Pro. Disclaimer. The following video is apart from our Premiere Pro Color Grading Masterclass. If you want a color grade like Hollywood movies, link to join our masterclass is in the description. Enjoy the video. War movies usually have desaturated and muted colors, but this is not the case with All Quiet on the Western Front. As the film's colorist Andrew Daniels said, it's a project with a legacy, both in literary and cinematic terms. As such, we were keen to move away from the more familiar looks that similar productions share, pushing the saturation in contrast. When making a war movie, it's tempting to go with a desaturated gray and earthy color palette, as these colors help to convey a sense of realism, grittiness, and seriousness, which are often associated with war and conflict. But if we really want to achieve realism, then we should strive to reflect what a real-world color palette would look. And that's what this movie wanted to accomplish. As the film's cinematographer, James Friend, stated, We actually wanted the film to be quite colorful. You have an obscene amount of mud in the frame, camouflaged uniforms with earthy tones, and a lot of Caucasian skin. This reflects the time, but equally, blood is red and the sky is sometimes blue. It's not all sepia tone and gray clouds. We wanted to bring these elements into the look too. In this video, we'll focus on the dominant use of blue color grading, mostly present in dawn and evening scenes, and recreate the color grade from this shot. And this is the video that will be color grading. This video obviously doesn't have the set and costume design as our reference, but the composition of the shot and the overcast weather are quite similar. Let's quickly analyze the reference shot and footage we plan to color grade before starting the color grading process. Let's take a look at the movie scene first. Examining the RGB parade scope reveals that the dominant colors in both the shadows and highlights are green and blue, giving the whole image a cyan look. Red channel is less dominant. We can see there's not too much of reds in both the shadows and highlights. However, there are some desaturated red and magenta tones on the actor's skin, which we can see on the vector scope. Still, the cyan tones are a lot more saturated. Upon examining the RGB parade scope for our shot, we can see that the red, green, and blue channels are relatively balanced, with the green channel having slightly more dominance, leading to a subtle green tint in the image. The vector scope indicates that all tones have similar levels of saturation, but due to the prevailing green tint, the magenta range lacks saturation. To achieve a look similar to the reference, we'll need to add a cyan tint by raising the green and blue tones, while lowering the red ones, increase the overall contrast, and bump up the saturation of cyan tones. Doesn't sound too complicated, right? Let's jump into Premiere Pro and start. We had our reference clip and the shot to be color graded in the timeline. We'll select the comparison view so that we can see the reference clip on the left and our shot on the right. To begin with, We'll apply a Lumetri color effect and label it LUT. As we intend to use multiple Lumetri color effects stacked on top of each other, it's a good idea to name them so we can easily make adjustments later if needed. In the Creative tab, under Look, we'll load our All Quiet on the Western Front LUT. It's a bit too strong for this shot, so we're going to lower the intensity to 80. This gave us a good starting point by pushing the colors towards the blue and green range, as the ones in the reference. Next, we'll add another Lumetri color effect and label this one Grass. Grass in our scene is too bright and green, and we want to make it similar hue and brightness as the sandbags in the reference shot. We'll go to HSL Secondary tab and use the color pickers to select the grass range. Let's turn on color slash gray so we can precisely see which elements are we selecting and turn off the comparison view so we have more space to work with. Using the sliders below, We'll refine the selection so it includes as much grass as possible, while affecting as little of the subject's face and uniform. We'll set the denoise to 100 in order to smoothen the selection and decrease the noise, and blur to 5. This will soften the edges of the mask to blend the selection. Let's turn off the color slash gray mode and turn on the comparison view so we can start matching the grass with our reference. Let's start with removing some of the greens from the grass. We'll do that by pushing the tint to magenta. Let's do 25. Since magenta is located opposite of green on the color wheel, by adding it we are removing some of the greens. In order to add more teal to the darker parts of our shot, we'll push the shadows on the color wheel to sign, add a bit of green in the midtones, 
and just a bit of magenta and blue in the highlights. Once we are happy with the hue of the grass, we'll start adjusting the brightness. By lowering down the mid-dumps and shadows will make it darker, and we'll bring up the highlights a bit to match the brighter parts of the grass to the bright parts of sandbags in the reference. The colors of our grass are a bit too intense, so we'll lower the saturation to 90. We can see the before and after of this lumetri color effect. Grass is looking closer to what we want. However, we are also affecting some parts of our subject's skin tones. To fix that, we'll draw a quick mask around our subject and set it to inverted. This way our lumetri color effect won't affect the masked part. We'll set the masked feather to 25 so we don't have hard edges of our color grade. As our subject is moving, we need to track the mask. This can be done by manually keyframing the mask path or by using Premiere Pro's mask tracking option. There isn't much movement in the shot, so we'll track it using the Premiere's tracking option. And this did a pretty good job. We can see that this lumetri color effect is now affecting just the grass. Next step is to match the tone and color of the sky. We'll add a new lumetri color effect and label it sky. Using the HSL secondary color pickers, we'll select the sky range and refine the selection with the sliders. We'll set the denoise to 100 and blur to 5. Our sky is too bright and muted, in comparison to the one in the reference. To fix that, we'll lower the mid-dones to make it darker. Add more blues by adjusting the temperature to minus 15, and add some greens by adjusting the tint to minus 7, to make it more cyan. And we'll bump up the saturation to 120, to make the colors more intense. And that's it. With the sky complete, our next objective is to match the skin tones. We'll add a new lumetri color effect and label it skin. Using the HSL secondary color pickers, we'll select the face and refine the selection with the sliders. We'll set the denoise to 100 and blur to 5. Unfortunately, we can't get a good selection, so we'll have to mask out the skin tones on our subject's face. We'll draw a mask just around his skin tones and let Premiere Pro track it. We'll expand the mask by 10, so we don't miss any of the skin tones near the edge and bump up the feather to 15, so we have a nice blend. We can turn on the comparison view again and start with matching the skin tones to the reference. We'll start by pushing the shadows to red to simulate the blood flow. Actor in the reference shot has some magenta in his skin tones, so we'll replicate that by pushing the mid-tones to magenta just a bit. Also, the highlights on the actor in the reference shot are brighter and his face has a bigger contrast, so we'll bump up the highlights and bring up the contrast to 30. To finish it off, we'll bring down the saturation to 85, as our skin tones are a bit too saturated in comparison with the reference. With the skin tones now matched, we can move on to bringing the entire color grade together. We'll add a Lumetri color effect and label it Curves. We'll go under Lumetri Scopes and turn on RGB Parade, so we can see the individual color channels, red, green, and blue, on both clips, and match ours to the reference. Based on the red channel in the scope, we can see we lack reds in the highlights and have too much of them in the shadows. We'll go to the Curves tab and start by adjusting the red curve first. By pulling the top point to the left, we'll add more reds in the highlights, making the top of the red signal from our shot in the same range as in the reference. Next, we'll pull the bottom point to the right to reduce the reds in our shadows. That will bring the bottom of our red signal at the similar level to the one in the reference. That's it for the red channel. Green and blue channels are looking good, we could just add a tiny bit of both greens and blues in the highlights to match the top levels of the scope. We can see that this curves adjustment did a good job on making our subject's skin tones even more similar to the ones in the reference, and with the sky as well. However, the highlights on the actor's face in the reference are still noticeably brighter than on ours. Let's adjust that. We'll add a lumetri color effect and label it skin highlights. Using the HSL secondary color pickers, we'll select the bright parts of the subject's skin and refine the selection using the sliders so we affect just the highlights of the subject's face. We'll bump up the denoise and set the blur to 15. We'll bring up the midtones to make it brighter, lower the saturation to 80, and add some cold colors in the midtones to make the selected highlights more of a neutral color as in the reference. And that's it. We have just one small color anomaly to fix. Our horizon line is currently gray. That's because of the HSL secondary adjustments we applied on the grass and the sky. The slight blur applied to the edges of the selection caused the horizon line, which connects them, to remain the same color as before. We'll quickly fix that. 
We'll add a new Lumetri color effect and label it Horizon Line. Using the HSL secondary color pickers, we'll select the line and refine the selection with the sliders. We'll set the denoise to 100 and blur to 2. We can see that we will affect some of the parts of the hoodie our subject is wearing, but that won't matter. We can always mask it later if we see it's causing problems. We'll bring down the midtones and add some sign to midtones, shadows, and highlights. We'll also bring down the highlights a bit. By doing so, we can see that the previously gray horizon line is now balanced. For the final touch, we can add our last Lumetri color effect and label it final. We'll add our all quiet on the western front LUT once again and drop the intensity all the way to 10. Our shot is a bit too saturated, so we'll lower the saturation to 95. And that's it for this color grade. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing and feel free to check out our color grading course and movies inspired LUTs.